first head coach in major college football history to hit 400 wins, and he did so Saturday night thanks to his offense scoring on five straight possessions. We do put on makeup. You guys do our makeup, and Ben Roethlisberger drives by in a golf cart, and he yells over to me, don't worry, you look good. And you're saying that money that the franchise did not have was money that was taken from the franchise. It certainly appears that way on the surface. The Steelers were plenty busy today. They started the day with seven picks, including four in the fifth round, but maybe their biggest story wasn't who they drafted, but who they traded for. That is until Adam Pac-Man Jones strips Roddy White, and probably the only time Pac-Man Jones and strips in the same sentence is a good thing. But now that he's training for MMA fights, he spars with guys more my size, because he says it trains him better. If you're not careful, that, that'll take your arm right off. This may look and sound like a normal high school basketball game. But there are three reasons why this game is unlike any other in state history. This we're your officials for today, and welcome to today's history-making event. To even get three females on a female game, let alone for a boys game, is, is it's, it's an honor. In what's believed to be the first time ever in Pennsylvania, three women officiated a boys varsity basketball game. Sue Kavensky, Terry Petek, and Vicki Markowitz, all District 6 officials, have nearly 50 years of combined referee experience. No, that way! My line, as long as I've been in education and officiating, the best man for the job is a woman, and you're looking at three of them. Need I say any more? Thursday's game was the brainchild of Purchase Line Athletic Director Jim Clapp, who told me he had been trying four to five years to have three women officiate one of his boys' games. I've always believed in equal opportunity. I mean, I, I just feel inside, you know, that uh, it's sort of a sense of accomplishment more than anything, not so much for myself, but for them getting the opportunity. Once the ball was tipped, it was all business for everyone involved. Red, four, hold, two. And just like any other game, there were mixed reviews for the ones in the black and white striped shirts. I didn't have a problem with any one of their calls. I thought they officiated a very nice game. It was a little different. Uh, most of the male officials let you play a little bit. These ones, they, they call a little more tacky fouls. It didn't bother us any. We just wanted to play. The girl that was watching this and says, we went into officiating because we saw you on TV and you said that we could do it. That's, that's great. Shane Shipley is one of the best motocross riders in the world. So good, in fact, he's headed to the annual X Games later this month in Los Angeles. But a bike isn't the only thing he has to ride every day. So much of being in a wheelchair is about your independence being taken away. And this sport gives you or enables you to get your independence back. Shane is paralyzed from the waist down, the result of a motocross accident 10 years ago. So how does someone who rides in these get so good at riding one of these? To him, he says it's second nature. I mean, it's what I grew up doing. It's what I grew up, you know, what I love to do. I mean, it's a lot harder than what you think, not being able to put your feet out, like going around the track. I tried before, I can't, I can't do it. It's amazing what he can do. For an eight-year stretch after Shane's accident in 2000, he didn't go near a track. He said the sport had let him down. But thanks to a support system of family and friends, Shipley returned to riding in 2008 and has been flying since. I had that feeling of freedom again. You know, when you're on the bike, it's the only time you're not in a wheelchair other than when you're in bed. Now, Shane will head to the X Games from July 29th through August 1st. There, he will race in the Extremity Games, a section of the X Games for disabled athletes. He says if his bike runs well, he expects to bring home gold. Matt Mazel, WJC TV Sports. Holiday Hoops tournaments wrapped up tonight across the region. We made our way down to Boswell for one of the longest running holiday tournaments in the area. It's the 44th annual Boswell JC's final North Star and Shade hooking up. We pick it up at the end of the first seconds to go when Kenny Gibbons drops it like it's hot. Bucket in the foul. He led all scores with 16. Second quarter, more of the same. This time it is Bret Hart and the Hitman draining it from three. He had 15 on the night. Shade was up as much as 10 when North Star rallies. It's Bose 
Soberdash going strong to the 10. Nice bucket with the lay. And then it is big sophomore Tony Strazer. He had 12 for North Star, but Shade was big from deep all game. 7 of 12 on the night. Brock Medva adding three of his own. Shade wins the Boswell JCs 51 to 47. Pitt Johnstown women in action tonight hosting Lock Haven. You want a three point show? The Lady Cats give you one. Andrea Dalton, she had 23 in the night. Then it's Stacey Good from the top of the key. How about Sheena Aiden in the corner? She had 22. Lady Cats 11 of 25 from deep. How about Moore Aiden? Gets the rebound, goes back up, and the foul. But right before the half, off the UPJ missed three, Emily Doherty gets the outlet and launches one from half court. Good at the buzzer, they count it, but it's worth another look. See ball in hand, double zeros on the shot clock. Fortunately for the Lady Cats, it didn't matter. UPJ goes on to win 85 to 72. And a big win tonight for the Penn State women, knocking off 13th ranked Iowa 68 to 59. It's their Big Ten opener. Alex Bentley led the way with 19 points. Julia Tregel also had double figures in the win. Greater Johnstown Jr. Jervon Simon helped lead his Trojans to a district championship and a state playoff berth this year. Now he can add some individual hardware to the trophy case. Simon was named this year's Point Stadium Award winner for his performance against Bishop McCord in October. He beat out eight other nominees from March through November. In the 27-14 win, Simon ran and threw for over 100 yards and had four total touchdowns. Uh, I'm surprised. I didn't think I'd get it. I thought one of the baseball players, or Anthony LaRue, Anthony LaRue or even uh, Blake Bustard, would get it. I was surprised I got it. Simon also won this year's Point Stadium Play of the Year for his fourth quarter 80 yard touchdown run in the same game. And anybody who knows me knows I'm a proud alum of Syracuse University. I wear my orange on my sleeve and my tie. And our football team came through big tonight, knocking off Kansas State in the inaugural Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium. It's Cuse's first bowl trip since 04 and our first bowl win since 2001. Big East foes, we're coming for you. We'll be right back.